Hi, I'm Bob Kendrick, president of the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, historic 18th and Vine in Kansas City, Missouri. Well, it's easy to fall in love with the romanticism of these courageous athletes who, as I like to say, forged a glorious history in the midst of an inglorious time in American history that sometimes we lose sight that the Negro Leagues were the third largest Black-owned business in this country during that era of American segregation. It only trailed Black-owned insurance companies who emerged during that era and would insure African Americans more than the 10 or 15 cents that the white insurance companies would insure us. And so this was a thriving Black business. And so essentially, wherever you had successful Black baseball, you typically had thriving Black economies. 18th and Vine, where we are, is no exception. It was the epicenter of Black life in Kansas City, literally a cultural crossroads where jazz and baseball intersected. But because of the great popularity of the Kansas City Monarchs, and to put it in perspective, we tell the story oftentimes about opening day here for Kansas City, for the Kansas City Monarchs, there would be a marching band that would start at 18th and Vine and march up to 22nd in Brooklyn. And behind them, 17,000 plus standing room only. Well, think about this. Those folks would leave the ballpark and come right back here to 18th and Vine and patronize all of those segregated, mandated Black-owned businesses. So what segregation did, as shameful as it was, it forced ownership. And so Black baseball was providing a tremendous fan base that supported those Black businesses and essentially led them to their economic heights. We want people to understand how this story so closely aligns to economic empowerment. So when we delve deeper into this story, I think there are three key themes that come out of this story. First and foremost, this is an incredible story of why economic empowerment is so important. This is an incredible story of an unprecedented level of leadership that emerged in the African-American community due to the formation of, these Negro, of the Negro Leagues and all of these Black business people now having great ties to things that were happening in this community. And ultimately, this is the story of the social advancement of America. If there is a bittersweet aspect to the overall story of the Negro Leagues, it does lie in the fact that you can directly parallel the rise and fall of the Negro Leagues with the rise and fall of Black economy. And truth of the matter is, Black economy never recovered from losing the Negro Leagues. So what was good morally, what was good socially, was devastating economically. But this was good for the soul of our country, and it moved us in ways socially that I don't think we ever dreamt possible. But it did come at a cost. What Jackie Robinson's Breaking of the Color Barrier essentially did was it jettisoned integration in a much broader fashion in our country. So now all of a sudden, those smaller Black-owned businesses that have been so pertinent, so prevalent, they could not compete with the larger white establishments. And so Black folks now had the opportunity to shop anywhere that they wanted. Thanks to the leadership of, of Buck O'Neill, who said, this is where we will build this museum, and in doing so, we will turn the fortunes of 18th and Vine. That was in 1990. Here we are now, over three decades later, recognized as America's national Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. But just as important, people are living, working, and playing at 18th and Vine again. So in essence, the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum has done for this community what Black baseball had traditionally done for African-American communities across this country. We felt like we had an inherent, both historical 
and civic responsibility to do that. And honestly, we haven't looked back since. I think, again, one of the things lost is the business side of Black baseball. The Black owners don't get nearly enough credit for what they were doing to finance these teams. The ball players were making a decent living playing the game that they love. The Great Depression took its toll on the Negro Leagues as well. And there was a period of time that the Kansas City Monarchs, which were one of the great barnstorming teams, and for those who might be hearing that term for the first time, barnstorming in this case meant that they were taking baseball to parts of the country and other parts of the globe where they may not have seen that brand of professional baseball. The Monarchs were a great barnstorming team, but the Negro Leagues by and large were hurt during the Great Depression and, and, and really shut down just as much of society did. And, and so again, the barnstorming aspect was a way in which J.O. Wilkinson, who owned the Monarchs, could keep his team afloat. And then around 1933, Gus Greenlee revived the Negro Leagues and came up with the East-West All-Star Classic, the Negro Leagues version of the All-Star game. And then Black, birth, Black Baseball saw a rebirth at, at that point in time. But no, the Great Depression had a tremendous impact, not, on the, not only on the Negro Leagues, but on Major League Baseball as it did with virtually every business aspect in our society at that time.